Hello? Hey, Ethan. Can you hear me? I can't hear you. Okay, great. How was your day today? Sorry, I, I still can't hear you. Wait, you can or you can't hear I me? I can't. Oh, I thought you said I can hear you. Now I can hear you. Oh, I'm sorry, I said I can't hear you. Now that you mention it, some of my students tell me they often confuse can with can't when they watch American TV shows. That's true. I've heard them say that a lot. How about we make a lesson on that? I think that's a great idea. Hey there. So as you just saw, a lot of learners have trouble seeing the difference between can and can't, especially in American English. So let's see how your listening is now. When I say, I can't hear you, what do you hear? And it's not just hard to understand the difference. For learners, can't is also challenging to pronounce with an American accent. So if you have ever suffered from confusing can and can't, if you watch this lesson until the end, you will master how to hear the difference between them and also how to pronounce them. And for those of you that are new here, I want to invite you to join our global community by hitting the subscribe button and the bell down below. That way, we can help you to understand fast speaking natives, to be understood by anybody, and to connect to the world. Like this fan who told us that watching our lessons has helped them improve their comprehension by 50%. In this comment thread on YouTube, this user said, I usually use cannot instead of can't just to avoid confusion. Then someone made a funny reply. I use my British accent in this only case. If you do the same thing, that's great. It shows that you're using different strategies to make yourself understood, which obviously is the most important thing. However, if you'd like to modify your accent and you want to learn to say it in a way that's closer to how natives say it, we'll do that in just a bit. In this comment, this person says that the problem is when you're watching an American TV show and you don't know if they said can or can't. That's so true. So let's start with what you know. This is pronounced can and this can't. However, that's just a strong form of those words. In context, can is usually reduced to the weak form, couldn't. For example, I can help you. You can sit here. Can I use your phone? We use the strong form can when it's in the last position. I can't do it, but she can. Or in short answers, yes, I can. Or when you use it to contrast it with something else or add emphasis. You can't go out. What you can do is stay home and study for your exam. If I could do it, you can too. Or finally, in the noun form, a can of beans. Now, can't is always said in the strong form, meaning we don't reduce the vowel sound to a schwa. This is the basic pronunciation of this word, can't. However, it is estimated that only one out of 10 times, people will say can't, fully enunciating that T at the end. Here's an example where I use a true T the fully pronounced T. She can't come with us. If I say it this way, it sounds a bit unnatural or like I really want to emphasize that she cannot come. Nine out of 10 times, natives will say this T a bit differently. There are three possibilities. We say it as a stop T, we drop the T altogether, or we turn it into a CH sound. And this is probably what confuses you because when you don't hear that clear T, it becomes very similar to can. Cannot, by the way, works exactly like can't, but you'd hear that in very formal contexts. You could also say cannot when you want to add extra emphasis, but we natives don't use it so often, so if you are in doubt, say can't instead. And if these subtleties that I'm pointing out make you feel a bit stressed or even scared, you are not alone. This is challenging stuff. And that is exactly why we developed our real life native immersion course to help learners like you confidently understand the most difficult aspects of native pronunciation. What we're seeing today is just one small aspect for you to master so that you can have advanced comprehension and speak clearly though. So as a gift for you today, I want to give you free access to our power learning mini course, which will give you a taste of our method. You can sign up now by clicking up here or down in the description. 
So now, what is the stop T? The stop T happens when we don't completely finalize the pronunciation of the T. With a true T, my tongue touches the roof of my mouth behind my teeth. Watch as I say these words. Hat. Eat. What. All right, but I usually would say those words with a stop T. In that case, my tongue stays down and I cut off the T at the back of my throat. Watch again. Hat. Eat. What. Now I'll say them again but practice saying the stop T in the same way as I do. It might be challenging for you, but keep practicing and eventually you'll be able to do it. Hat. Eat. What? All right, and now that you have a better idea of the stop T, let's go back to can't. Compare can't with a true T and can't with a stop T. Can't, can't. Can't, can't. Again, the air is stopped and you don't hear the t, -t, t sound at the end. I'll say a few sentences, first with a true T and then with a stop T. I can't understand. I can't understand. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I can't tell you. I can't tell you. I'll make it even more interesting now. First, I'll say it with a true T, then with a stop T. And then I'll say can. Pay attention to the differences. I can't go. I can't go. I can go. Also notice the difference in pitch. I can't go. I can go. Now the other possibility I mentioned was dropping the T. This is especially true if the next word starts in a vowel. So again, I'll say the following examples, first with a true T and then with no T at all. I can't always, I can always. I can't even, I can even. I can't often, I can often. All right, so now I bet you're scratching your head and asking yourself, but if can't is said with no T, then how the heck is it different from can in the affirmative? The answer is because, as I said earlier, can is almost always pronounced in the weak form, kun, when used in a sentence. When we say can't with no t, can't, we use the strong form, can. Okay, but now I know you're saying, but you said can can be pronounced strongly when it's in the final position or when it is used for contrast. Yes, there are going to be some cases where it could be rather ambiguous. However, that'll happen very rarely. And when it does, it can even trip up natives. However, most times the context will make it clear if the speaker is saying can or can't. Grammar also helps. If you ask me, can you help me? And I say, sorry, I can't help you. The word sorry indicates I'm saying no. Lastly, there's a third possibility and that's when the T turns into a ch sound. Luckily, this is quite easy. This simply happens when can't is followed by you. Can't you do it? You can come, can't you? This doesn't mean that you can't say it with a stop T. Can't you do it? Or even a true T. Can't you do it? Note that in this case, it gives a bit of extra emphasis. By the way, this T plus Y becoming a ch sound, like in can't you, is a great example of connected speech. If you want to learn more about how to understand more types of connected speech and even use it when you speak, then check out this lesson by clicking up here or down in the description below. All right, now let's review what we've learned so far. Answer true or false to these two questions. Can can be weak or strong. Right, it's usually reduced to kun but we also saw some cases where we pronounce it strongly as can. Can't has a strong form, but the weak form is more common. In this case, you don't need to worry about it reducing. Just remember that how we pronounce the T can change. With a stop T, can't. With a drop T plus a vowel, can even, for example, 
or we turn the T into a CH, can't you? Now that you know the differences, let's put your ears to the test. I'll say a sentence and you'll have to choose either can or can't based on what you hear. We can't park here. We can't park here. We can't park here. You can come. You can come. You can come. You can buy it here. You can buy it here. You can buy it here. Tim can't go with me. Tim can't go with me. Tim can't go with me. I can't eat that. I can't eat that. I can't eat that. Now get ready to speak English. Let's put your pronunciation to the test. I'll show you an image and you'll say either can or can't based on what you see. You can't swim here. You can pay with a credit card here. You can't use your cell phone here. You can't drive fast here. You can exchange money here. You can use the internet here. You can't take pictures here. Now let's use it in real life. Next time you are watching a TV series or video, listening to a podcast or speaking with a friend, take a moment to pay attention to this. Even pause and listen a couple times. Ask yourself, did they say can or can't? Was can said in a strong form or its weak form? How was the T pronounced or not pronounced in can't? There you have it. As promised, today you learned to tell can and can't apart. You've tuned your ears to the difference and you can also now pronounce can't with much more confidence. And now it's time to go beyond the classroom and live your English. Aww yeah. Yeah, I know. What have you been doing lately? I've been learning Portuguese. Oh yeah, I remember you mentioned that. How's that going? Well, if I'm being completely honest, I kind of feel stuck in a rut, you know? What do you mean? It just doesn't feel like I'm making any improvements, you know what I mean? I used to get so excited to watch the lessons, do the activities and stuff. But frankly, now I'm bored to tears. I think I'm going to throw in the towel.